Good morning guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at solving simple quadratic equations. Um, the first thing we might look at is what is meant by a quadratic. Now we looked at uh, linear terms, linear equations, and I guess before we look at quadratics, I'm just going to go back over what a linear equation is. They're things like um, x plus 3 equals 7. Okay, and um, you'll notice that all the equation that we've done, we've had x the or the unknown has always just been to the power of one. Okay, even if it was like two x plus three over seven equals two, it was always x to the power of one. That is what we refer to as linear. So what is quadratic? Well, quadratic is things like x squared equals nine, where the power is actually two. It could be 3x squared plus 1 over 4 equals 8, although that one would be very unfortunate because it would be very challenged, challenging to solve. Um, so what we're looking at is ones like the first one, like x squared equals 9. Now you might remember back to Mr Pythagoras where we used to use that a fair bit when we're looking for the hypotenuse or the shorter side of a triangle where once you knew what x squared was, we simply did the square root button and did the square root of both, which gave us the answer of 3. Now, there's a slight issue with what we were doing there because what we were actually doing, we were dealing with measurements, okay? Which meant that the answer had to be a positive number, okay? Because you can't have a negative measurement. But I want you to think about this. What is 3 squared? Hopefully you said 9. What is negative 3 squared? Well, negative 3 squared is minus 3 times minus 3, which is also positive 9. So there's a bit of an issue here. okay? And that is when I square a number, if I square the positive and the negative version, they come up with the same answer. Therefore, if I'm looking for the square root of 9, how do I know it's just 3? Because could it not also be the negative value as well? Now obviously if it's a measurement like Pythagoras' theorem, then it has to be the positive version. But if it's not, then there will generally be two answers, the positive version and the negative version. So let's have a look at some of these questions. So the first one says solve x squared equals 25. So what I'm going to do is to square root both sides. I now get x equals uh, 5. But we also know that x could also be negative 5. Remember, if I wanted to check my answer, I could put it back in, say, 5 squared. That equals 25. I could put in negative 5 squared. That also equals 25. So it could be either of these two answers. Now often we actually write it like this, x equals plus or minus 5. It's just a bit of a quick way to write that answer. So what do you reckon x would equal for the next one? Well hopefully you might have said x equals plus or minus 6. That's because the square root of 36 is positive 6 and I could have the positive version or the negative version. What about the next one? x squared equals 17. Now, if I square root this number, is it going to be a whole number? The answer is no. So we don't like writing decimals, as you know, if they are not exact numbers like 5.1 or 5.2 or terminating decimals. If they're continuous decimals like this one certainly would be, we don't like to round up. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to write plus or minus, which gives me both sides the square root of 17. I'm not actually going to put it into my calculator. I'm just going to leave it in terms of a square root sign. So now I can see it's exactly the square root of 17. So if you get questions where you can't actually square root the number to get a nice exact number or whole number or integer, then you can just leave it with the square root sign. But you do need to put the plus minus there because remember, it could be root 17 or it could be minus root 17. Um, the next question is a bit more challenging now. So I'm starting to go into just a little bit more challenging. So how would we normally do this? Well, we want to get the x by itself, right? 
So what's the opposite of plus 1? Well, it's minus 1. So I'm left with x squared equals 16. I can now square root both sides to get x equals plus or minus 4. How about the next one? What do you reckon? So minus 8 becomes plus 8. So I get x squared equals 100. Therefore, if I square root both sides, we get x equals plus or minus 10. Okay, now let's go to example 3, a bit more challenging again. So we've got here um, 3 times x squared. Well, let's get rid of the times 3 and do divide by 3. So x squared equals 27 divided by 3 is 9. Therefore, x equals, if I square root both sides, plus or minus 3. And the very last one, I'm going to take the 1 away to get 2x squared equals 8. I'm now going to divide it by 2 to get x squared equals 4. Therefore, x equals plus or minus 2 because I'm going to square it both sides. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward, guys. There's lots of questions about this. The only other thing I might uh, say is that sometimes they'll ask you about how many solutions that there are. For example, if we saw the x squared equals 4 question, we said that x equals plus or minus 2. Okay, therefore, there would be two different solutions to that question. Okay, and for most um, squared questions like this or quadratics, there will be two solutions. Um, there is a time, for example, maybe x squared equals 0. So if I square root 0, what do I get? Well, we don't really get plus or minus 0, do we? We just get 0. So in that case, we would say that there would be one solution. But here comes the tricky one. What about x squared equals minus 4. Now if you're not sure, maybe get your calculator out and type in the square root of negative 4 and see what happens. Now if you did that, it will should come up with a math error. You didn't do anything wrong. Okay, what we call this, it's undefined. Okay, it's not possible to take the square root of a negative number. Because think about this, whenever you square a number, like let's say 2 times minus 3, okay, um, sorry, that's not squaring, is it? Um, if you square a number like 2 times 2, we get 4. If I square a negative number, which times it by itself, we get 4. See how it's impossible to actually get a negative answer which means that if I try to square root the negative answer, it can't happen. So what we say, therefore, it has no solutions. And this is a part of maths that next year in year 9 and year 10, we delve into a lot, and particularly year 11 and 12, we do a lot of things to do with um, the number of solutions that a particular quadratic equation has. Um, look, I hope that sort of made a bit of sense to you, but for the most part, you'll be given questions like A, which you'll ask to square it, they quit the answer, and then you have your plus or minus version. Remember, if it's not a whole number, just leave the, the square root sign. Um, often, actually, I might say that word, that square root sign is often called a surd. So we'll leave it in surd form. Have an awesome day, guys. I hope that made sense to you. Email me if it didn't, and uh, have a good day and get the questions done.